Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members and guests. This is uh, Monday, October the 31st, 2022, and this is a regular meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. Uh, happy Halloween. Okay. Tonight we have uh, an image review. I think there are 15 uh, images, if I recall correctly, and our very own Mike Donovan is going to do the honors. But before we get to that, uh, Joe's going to talk about trips in a minute, and uh, I'm going to mention that Next uh, Monday, November the 7th, there'll be no meeting, okay? November the 9th is a Wednesday. We're gonna have a special presentation that Wednesday night at seven o'clock to give you suggestions to, for preparing your prints for the Calc ex print exhibit that's being held at Carlisle Arts Learning Center beginning in December. We need to get ready for that. So uh, Mike, Donovan and Joe Farrell and I are gonna be online that night to give you some suggestions to get you hyped up and ready to go with your prints for the uh, exhibit. We'll talk about all the, the deadlines and give you some suggestions for, for printing. Okay, then uh, November the 14th, this is gonna be, gonna be different and it should be interesting. We're gonna do a panel Q and A, okay? But we need your questions. Okay, and I sent out an email a couple, uh, like a week ago that I'll replicate tomorrow morning uh, to go out to you to, to give you some topics to think about, to stimulate your, your thinking. But I, I, I need questions from you because the night of uh, Monday the 14th, uh, Elaine Shook, uh, Curtis Walkie, Joe Farrell and myself are going to be on the panel to field your questions. So. Instead of taking questions live that night, we thought it would be better you know, manageable if you send them to me, my email address, and then I'll divvy the questions up and moderate that night. Uh, so please, within the next day or two, send me questions. There's no limit on how many questions you can ask, but uh, send me a few questions, anything to do with, with shooting, photography, shooting because we have planned then for a few weeks later, we're gonna do another panel Q&A, which will deal with your processing questions. Okay, so pretty much anything's fair game. Okay, Joe, over to you for the trips. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, we have a really busy schedule coming up. And uh, before we get into the coming ones, let's talk about the ones we had last week. One we had last week, we went to uh, Mil uh, the Mill Creek Falls uh, down in Southern Pennsylvania and actually was in Maryland. And um, uh, Mark, would you want to give us an update on that trip? Sure. Um, we, we, um, we met around, I guess it was about nine o'clock there. Uh, some people um, did, go, did um, ride share to get down. So we didn't have as many cars because you don't have a lot of parking there. The weather was nice. It, uh, it wasn't too cold. It wasn't too warm. It was just right. Uh, the, the light was good. It was uh, kind of a high overcast. Uh, we hit it just about the prime as far as the color goes for fall, and there was nice water um, flowing through through the stream. There was probably what Joe eight to ten people total somewhere in that range. So, um, and some came after you uh, you left, and so I think uh, we got up to twelve at that time. Okay, so we got up to twelve, and as far as I know, only one person fell in, <laughs> <laughs> and that was me. <laughs> Or fell, let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> but it was really good. The, the 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 lighting and everything. It was just, you know, you didn't you, you could have you could have not done anything with the stream and still had plenty of things to take pictures of. That was a beautiful day. And and I went back on a Wednesday, Mark. You're not gonna believe this, but I bet you 50% of the leaves were gone. Really? Honest to gosh, it was just amazing. My goodness. Uh, it was beautiful. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, we have uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, late afternoon around four o'clock, uh, a photo walk in the Capitol. And Eve, you wanna give us an update on what we're gonna be doing there? Sure, um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, we'll meet up at the uh, Capitol steps. This'll be specifically at the Capitol itself, looking for different individual details of the Capitol, architecture, texture, shadows, uh, leading lines, some um, different aspects of it that we might not notice when we take it all in. So Mary and I will take a walk around um, and then 
as Joe said, the weather should be good. Uh, we'll see what we see then. And then if anybody wants to stay for the blue hour, uh, Joe had mentioned um, possibly with that, you'd want a tripod for that. Otherwise you won't need a tripod, but if you stay until then, it'd be nice to have one. So it'll be a uh, close, uh, short walk, I would say. It won't be uh, all over the city or anything. And uh, Mary and I will hunt out some individual details and look at fun stuff. Great. Thanks, Eve. Mm -hmm. um, and then this coming Saturday on November the 4th, we going to be go we're going to be going to Pine Grove State Park for a hunt. Uh, Norbert, can you give us an idea of what we're going to be doing that day? Norbert Fry, are you here? He is. He's, uh, he's sorry, there we go. Now you got me? Yep, we hear you, yeah. Norbert. Okay. Uh, yes, we've done this a few years ago. We're going to do a scavenger hunt down at uh, Pine Grove Furnace. Uh, uh, I was down a couple days ago, and I have to say the same thing that you guys found out. Some of the leaves have have passed they're 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 sort of falling quickly now it seems like but anyway that being said we're having a scavenger hunt and there's about uh, 17 items there's going to be a handout and uh, there's a lot of things to, to take photographs there there you know go down the lake there's there's little streams there's there's just a numerous things bugs leaves whatever so actually we're going to be there we're going to meet at nine o'clock sharp and it's right at the general store there's a parking lot right beside the general store and uh, and we'll walk from there and we'll walk down the trails and we'll walk towards the lake. And uh, it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful morning. That, that's for sure. I, got, I heard the temperature is about, about 70 degrees. So so it's gonna be warm, but uh, I think the leaves are fading. That's the only problem. <laughs> but but that, that being said, I think we're gonna have a good morning though. Okay. Thanks, Norbert. Sure. Um, that'll be on Saturday the 5th. It's the 5th. Yeah, the 5th, yes. Oh, the fifth. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm looking. Yes. I'm looking ahead on yeah. the wrong. No, it's the the fifth. Okay. Or the fourth. What? This coming Saturday. Right. Yes, this coming Saturday. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the fifth. Yes. And we have a a little preview of a trip we have going on on November the twelfth. Um, Mary Fox, I uh, want to give us an idea of what we're going to be doing that day. Yeah, Joe. Um, we'll be going to Zoo America. And there's a lady there, Hi. Joe and I ran into, uh, her, she's a, a assistant director of education and engagement, I think. Her name is Elaine Gruen, and she was so helpful and informative. She may be speaking to us when we get there, hopefully, or any of the volunteers, they're all, all so nice. And just like any zoo, there's gonna be a lot of animals, like Joe and I saw lynx, wolves, bears. Well, we saw part of a bear anyway. <laughs> um, some bald eagles and inside there's the snakes and and, and like the the water critters you know and there's bugs dennis for you i will not be there but there's a lot of them there. there's a variety of everything there pretty much and um the lenses i think i think you recommended this joe like normal and telephoto forget the tripods <laughs> you won't be using them and um there'll be fencing and glass but you can get around that sometimes in, in a lot of cases. And, and the cost is um, anywhere from 11 to $13. If you're old, like some of us, you get in cheaper. If anything you want to add, Joe? Uh, just that uh, really strongly recommend you bring a, uh, a strong telephoto. Uh, with that and with a wide open aperture, aperture you can get away from the fencing uh, if you look on our club Facebook page, we posted some pictures when Mary and I went, and frankly, you can't see any of the fencing, but you need a, uh, a telephoto lens. I used a 100 to 400, and I was probably in the range of two to 400 at that particular time. But, so if you, but if you have like a 70 to 300, it would be perfect to get away from, uh, from the, the, uh, the fences. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome, Jeff. And uh, that's it for the uh, the trips, Dennis. Very good, thanks, Joe. Okay, Mike, let's uh, get you sharing here, and we'll get started with the uh, image review. Okay, coming right up. Right. 
You're getting experienced at this. Oh, a couple of clicks and you're good to go. <laughs> I'm going to get fancy and try full screen mode. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bingo. We'll give you a trick or treat candy bar. <laughs> I appreciate it. Can everybody hear me okay? We can hear you just fine. All right. Um, normally, one of the things that I do is. Um, give Diane homework and not just Diane, but, but anybody who can look up an artist that might help inspire them or, or be related to their work. But since tonight was a theme and the theme was water, I just want to go ahead and give, give these um, photographers names to everybody because they all have to do with water. So if you want to grab a paper and a pencil, or if you don't, um, the first person that you might be interested in is named Ray Collins, and that's C-O-L-L-I-N-S. He's a photographer from Australia, New South Wales, and what you'll want to do is click on the seascapes and the landscapes. So his name is Ray Collins. The next person does not make pies, even though her name is Sarah Lee. It's S-A-R-A-H-L-E-E. -E, and you'll want to click on SCAPE, S-C-A-P-E. Now, the next person, the, these are absolutely, I was gobsmacked when I first ran into this guy. He photographs waves at Lake Erie in the middle of these humongous storms. And his processing is just eye popping. His name is Trevor Pottleberg, P O P T E L B E R G, Trevor Pottleberg, P O T T E L B E R G, and click on Lake Erie Waves, obviously. Okay, the next person is Clark Little. Um, Clark Little does 99% of his photography in Hawaii, and he stations himself right where you get your neck broken, right where the waves are hitting, and then photographs through the tube of the waves. So that'll give you some idea of what you can do the next time you go to the waterfalls. I've seen his work. It's incredible. Oh, it is. It's awesome for sure. Yeah, you wonder how he doesn't get killed. <laughs> I know. Okay, and the last guy is Mark Adamus or Adamus. I don't know how he says it. It's M A R C A D A M U S. M A R C A D A M U S. And you'll want to click on rivers and streams for him. Could you spell Trevor's last name again, please? I'll be glad to. P-O-T-T-E-L-B-E-R-G, Pottleberg. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want to hear it again? I got it. Okay. So those five people um, are photographers, no painters this time, and they have concentrations on water. So I thought maybe um, you'd want to take a look at that and get some inspiration or ideas or whatever the case may be. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Image number one, low tide, high climb. Um, maybe kind of chuckle, it sounded like buy low, sell high, which is also good advice. Um, I like the patterns that you found, especially in the rocks, which echo the patterns in the uh, the ladder. So there's a good catch there. Your composition is good. And I like the fact that you told a story. Somebody came in there in the kayak, tied it up, and by some miracle managed to climb the ladder up the wall and out. Unless, of course, they just... Um, sat there until the tide came in and got out and walked away and then let it go back down. But probably not. I like the story of it for sure. Um, what could they have done a little better at the time of capture? I might suggest more breathing room 
and by more breathing room i mean a looser shot and especially you're a little tight down here and what happens is when the viewer works his way or her way around the edge of the photograph they'll get stopped when there's something that extends out or is really tight to it and also the ladder you see you're really really close here and then you lose the top here so i would say a looser shot i think would uh would help what could they do in post-processing to improve the image i already mentioned a lower crop i might also suggest um try some more contrast and by the way um thank you for those of you who put your your pictures in i try to look at it as giving compliments and suggestions if you think one of my suggestions is ridiculous don't do it try it and then undo the undo button is your friend but i would suggest some more contrast here that i think would give you some more pop and i want you to try something else i want you to try to get rid of that duck and see if that makes any difference in the attention that goes to here and then up and out the duck is a little bit of a, a distraction, I would say. And here's why. I talk about the values, which some people call the brightness, but it's not quite the same thing. The value here matches the value on some of these rocks, which sets up a bit of a, um, a conflict here on which thing you want to look at. So try it without the duck, try it with the duck. And if you're not sure how to do cloning, then you can um, sign up for Dennis's class or send me an email. Okay, I suggested um, some more contrast, maybe a little more sharpness as well, because you have tremendous opportunities here with texture. I like your concept. I like the idea of the story, as I said. Um, one other thing, depending on how, how familiar you are, familiar you are with your software you might want to back off the saturation on the greens and see what that does they relate texture wise to the rest of this stuff but they seem a little bit harsh color wise so back them off a little bit this is your star so you you don't want any any conflict with that uh let's see you use warm and cool colors very very well the cool blue of the wall and the warm yellow of the boat, which is what makes the kayak jump out, is the um, the difference in the colors. Warm colors, as you know, advance, and cool colors um, descend into the background. So you did it right as far as that goes. Lighter values also advance, and that's the problem here. So be careful with that. Lighter values advance, warmer colors advance, the others drop back. It's a good shot. Um, as far as post-processing, try a little sharpness and a little contrast. If you can, if you still have space, loosen your crop and see if you can get rid of that duck and see if it makes a difference. And if anything, I suggest you try it and it, it's not to your satisfaction, don't do it. Okay, who's the photographer? Yeah, it's Rich Scar. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I I wrestle with I think all of those things. I like your. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, but um, and one of the things, by the way, I did is is that of course a lot of seagulls uh, visit this place, so I got rid of all these little white spots who were really from the seagulls. But good I, work. Yeah, I, I call them Mikey's now, so I got rid of all of them. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the duck was, I, I, I went back and forth on the duck, whatever. I'll take it out again and, and see. I thought maybe it left a little bit too much of a, of a non-space on the left, whatever. You know, I the, see. The issue on the contrast and the, in the, uh, in the sharpness of it too. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I'm, I'm wrestling. It's my own problem. I'm wrestling with the, how this, how a photo looks on various screens. Yes, correct. And, and I'm overplaying that a little bit. I have two, two screens. One's an older one, et cetera. So I went back and forth, whatever, and I I, I got it in, into Joe Farrell dark mode, which I liked, but I was afraid that might not show up, you know, as well. But those are yep. good. Uh, those are all good comments. I'm not sure that I have enough space on the bottom. 
Um, okay. I like, I like to, the top of it um, um, leading up, whatever that almost leads to kind of a place you don't know, but yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, yeah, but thanks. Good comments. I appreciate that. Oh, certainly. You're very welcome. Um, the, the, the <laughs> suggestion that I give a lot of times is shoot loose. You can crop later. Yeah. And yeah. I myself have to stop and think, I can hear my own voice saying shoot loose and crop later when I'm photographing. So yeah. that that's a, a thing that I think works out. <laughs> Great. I remember that. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. All right. I'm not going to say the title of this one because <laughs> I only taught fourth grade and I don't know numbers that go that high. So we'll just call it PSX. I like the fact that whether you know it or not, your use of complementary colors and warm versus cool really, really was nice. The, the blue and orange, which I ran into a lot in these images, is a great, great complementary color scheme to use. And you see it in nature a huge amount. So you did the, the, the warm and cool, you use complementary colors, um, you may want to look at the work of Monet because that's what this is very reminiscent of. Uh, you actually used what's known as the rule of thirds because you have your center of interest over here in the, um, the right third quad, right third section. Can't call it a quadrant, that'd be four. Um, and I also like the contrast of the shapes, the wiggly water, the ziggly lines, and the round, smooth water lilies. So that uh, you did a good job there on those things. One thing that I might suggest in post-processing is that you desaturate a little bit, that you cut back on your colors. They are absolutely beautiful, but the colors don't necessarily have to be the, the first thing everybody notices. You also want them to notice your shapes and your lines and your composition. So I might suggest you back off, just desaturate it all. Just use the desaturation slider and see what, what you think. Um, also, I might suggest you try a square crop because this is has so much potential. It really does. And I'm thinking a square crop a little less down here and a little more up here, that might do you um, tell your story a little better than this out here. So try that too, if you would. Um, I noticed that it's not like, and again, I'm looking at a screen, it's not shoot super sharp or crisp, but I don't care in this case because it's impressionism. And what that means is using soft colors, um, Nothing is sharp. The impression is painted with just spots of color, really. So my suggestion would be your composition wise, I'd crop the left off and see what you think of that. And again, like I said, a square crop, maybe somewhere. I'd try and include this if you can. Maybe somewhere around there, I think would look good. Give it a shot and see what you think. Um, the other thing I would suggest, if you don't want the square crop, square crop and you like how it is, you might think it's ridiculous to pick out this little thing. But Joe Farrell can tell you, he had a, um, I think, a professional image reviewer. And one of the things she said was about the white spots. Joe, am I right about that? Yes. Okay. So... Don't get the idea that I'm just a pixel peeper. What I try to look at is how will it look as a print? And this will be there on the print. So if you don't like my square crop idea, just remove this out. Because again, the value is the same as some of these. And that causes a conflict in the viewer. Um, the lighting is smooth. It's absolutely perfect. Impressionism wise, um, the color, as I said, I would desaturate. And if you do masking, I would desaturate the flower on its own even, see what you think of that. Creativity wise, it's a real good use of juxtaposition, meaning 
the round and smooth against the jiggly jaggly, the warm against the cool, very good work there. So my two main suggestions are here, try a crop and desaturate your colors. And I think you're gonna have a beautiful impressionistic work. Okay, who's the photographer? Okay, would the photographer identify him or herself, please unmute yourself. And uh, maybe Rick, maybe you want to check for us in case that person's not online tonight. Yes, Jenna Godwin. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think John is with us tonight. Let's see. No, apparently not. Okay. Okay, image three is called Sparkles and Rocks. I was wondering if the cat's name was Sparkles, but I guess not. Um, tremendous composition. Really, really nice composition. The curving line, starting with the cat going to the clothing, working down the net and all the way out to the fishing rod, picking up the man on the way. That's a beautiful, beautiful arc there. Really, really nice work on that. Your exposure is good. Um, there's not really any super burnout spots. Again, I'm looking at a screen, so I'm making some presumptions here that um, some of the things that I think are pretty bright really aren't. I think as far as what you could have done at the time of capture, I'm going to say the same thing again, shoot loose, crop later, then the cat will have a little bit more room and be... I don't want to say more noticeable, but it'll it'll seem more comfortable to the viewer rather than kind of falling out of the image. It'll have a little more space. As far as post-processing, any suggestions? Um, there's a couple light spots down near the bottom that I would think about removing um, on the rocks at the bottom, but not a big deal. I'm Mike, looking can, you, down can you highlight? Okay, thank you, Mike. I'm looking down here, okay. and even this is a little bit bothersome, but you could just, um, I don't suggest you lift the crop because that would go against what I just said about the cat. So just, just you know, darken those a little bit or clone them or whatever you decide to do. Um, the wow factor we have a space for, and it's, it's really good there. The wow factor is really good. The exposure is pretty much on the button. I see you used a filter, probably oil painting maybe. Um, it makes the water look just slightly wonky. So maybe what you'll want to try is if you do masking, maybe back off the filter just on the water and just a little bit, not completely, just back it off a little bit and it won't look quite so crispy. You can, you can back off on that a little. Your composition is fabulous, again, this is just an absolutely wonderful curve. And you end up, the viewer ends up right where you want him to end up, where the fisherman is fishing. Absolutely great. And one other thing, um, we're to mention the color here. And here's the value, and here's the value. And they match each other perfectly, which makes the cat stand out even more and makes him stand out even more. The blue of the water, the blue of the jeans, and the blue of his feet. Oh, sorry, the, the warmth of his feet. The warm color, cold color juxtaposition. It, it really does work. Creatively, it's a great shot. 50 people looked at that and saw no potential, and you did. So my suggestions are, my suggestions are cut back on the filter on the water. Those are my babies. And... Loosen your con loosen the crop a little bit at the bottom. Everything else is stupendous. Okay, who's the photographer? That's Mary Eileen Clarkson. That curve is just great. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, took lots of shots of this, lots of shots of this guy. <laughs> and um yeah, this is the one I like the best because they, yeah, they, they really, his, he had not, he didn't have his hand out 
most of the time with that rod. And when I saw that, it just, yeah, it extended the curve and I really liked it. So I, yep. I, uh, I grabbed this, I took this one out and, and worked on it. So thank you. Sure, even the colors create your curve. Oh yeah. Did really you nice. Apply, did you apply a filter in post? Yes. Is it an oil painting filter? The oil, the oil painting filter, yes. <laughs> Very good, Mike. Thank you. See if you can mask it and see what happens if you if you pull back on the water a little bit. See if that makes a difference. Okay, I will. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Okay, this is black ice. Um, the exposure on this is is tremendous. It's a difficult exposure with all the light and all the dark. The whites and the blacks have detail because I'm thinking if I can see detail on my screen, it'll definitely be in the print for sure. Um, a long exposure is really difficult to guess how it's going to look. So I'm guessing there was more than one of these taken. And this, this really does work. The soft and the hard, the black and the white, the, the, the layers here, the dark, the light, the dark, the light, the dark back here really really nice and and it gives it real depth there's a definite star of the show but there's also an environment that it sits in so real good work there i might even suggest i can't see the top on mine because of it says i'm screen sharing but up here i don't know if you can see or not how do i get rid of that Oops. we don't, we don't see that way you might be able to drag it off to another area of your screen. I'm si oh, okay. Yeah, up here on the top, I'd try again a looser crop if you have it, because you're a little tight right here and right here. And when a viewer is working their way around the image, hopefully that's what they're doing, they'll run into this, and it'll be a um, a, a hiccup or a little speed bump. So maybe a little more room in the in the um, in the top crop. And one other thing that I would suggest is removing this because it really does not help with this. I know it repeats the shape, but it also leaves the image. And the value here is the same as the value here. So again, there'll be a bit of a conflict rather than a lead. And besides, you don't want to lead from here to here. So try disposing of that and see what you think there. The wow factor is, is excellent. The exposure is tremendous. It's a dreamy looking image, which is really nice, kind of soft and creamy, but yet still imaged and detailed down here. I, I would not say please remove all these because they're real. They're not dust on the image or anything like that, they're actually real. Uh, maybe there's a small one here to get rid of, but like I said, that's pixel peeping. The um, You centered it, but you did it in the top half of the image, which is good composition wise. So the distractions, I already mentioned the, um, the little white dot there, which will only show up on a print, I'm sure. And the top right, I'd like that, um, like you tried and remove that and see if it makes a difference in what you're looking at. The lighting is smooth and even. It's it's actually backlighting because you can see the shadows here and here, meaning the light is behind it. And you can tell that with the difference in value of from here to here. So real good use of the lighting there. Um, creative shot. I like the saying that you made something ordinary into something extraordinary. I like that little motto or saying. Um, Post-processing a looser crop at the top, remove the thing on the right and you're good to go. Who did the image? Uh, that would be Merle Hirsch. That's awesome, Merle. Thank you. Thank you. It, it, uh... It's challenging getting all that frothy uh, white there uh, and getting the timing right all the time. I'm sure. I uh, I didn't see that 
I guess that's a water spot right underneath there. I didn't see that before. Uh, but, uh, and uh, I agree with that top right hand corner there. Okay. Uh, I, I thought the one I sent you, I had taken that out, but maybe, you know, computers, uh, maybe I didn't get that. So. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood, definitely. Thank okay. you, Mike. Oh, thank you. All right. Okay, Rick, it's autumn. Um, the exposure is absolutely on the button here. The shutter speed is really, really good. This <laughs> nobody wants to see water anymore that's frozen. That's the your shot is a thousandth of a second, unless you're making like an abstract or something. So this this is just the ticket. It's beautiful. Your composition is really, really nice. Um, the fact that the wide angle lens actually carries the viewer out, up, up and out. So this is placed perfectly. Comes down into a swirl and carries right out. So you have a beautiful leading line, an implied leading line which follows all the way down and all the way out. And you're, you're, I'm guessing you used a wide angle lens. That really helped actually. It helped to lead right out of the image. So um, good work there. On the screen, this looks burned out. Probably in real life, it is not. So it's, it, like I said, it's difficult to tell. And if it is burned out, those things are a nightmare to fix. Because if you try to darken it, they get gray. And then you try the retrieve details and they get all funky in it. So sometimes it's best just to leave it all creamy and smooth and, and beautiful. A wow factor, that's, that's excellent. Um, again, I mentioned the wide angle effect in the leading line. And you also have a beautiful three layers of depth here. You have this you have this and you have this. It's not light and dark layers, although this is lighter for sure. It's three separate textures, which also can divide your image. So that's really nice. Uh, let's see, the smooth, even lighting, the use of colors, the, the, the fact that there's so many warm colors in here balanced by these cool greens. So nothing predominates, predominates. Even back here, you have some greens balancing it out. So it's not just a yellow picture or an orange picture. I like the balance there for sure. Um, creative shot, including, like I said, all four of the, the wide angle spreads. That looks nice. Your processing is, is really quite good. So good work here. Who did this? Uh, that would be me, George Kersick. Very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, I I, uh, I do struggle. There's a number of different ways I can handle the uh, the highlights at the bottom of the falls. <laughs> right. But I liked it to leave it alone because the creamy look uh, overrode any consideration for uh -huh. get rid of that blowout. Okay, good. The only the only thing that you run into, not just you, but anybody that has a blown out area is, and I'm sure everyone's aware of this, that there's no white ink in your printer. Yeah, exactly. So what's gonna happen is nothing's gonna print there and the paper's gonna show through. Yeah, it, I, was, uh, I was at Ricketts Glen two weeks ago and uh, this is a actually a five exposure HDR. Oh, nice. And, uh, and I was actually in the stream with my tripod and, you know, <laughs> Nickel deep to get that well, the angle I wanted. So, well, it paid off. No, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, reflection. Uh, the first thing that everybody says, including me, is it's nice if you can catch a catch light in the eye. And here it did, which is is really really pretty impressive. The light is a little bit harsh, like a midday light. You can see by the shadows that the sun's pretty high in the sky, 
but you handled it pretty well for sure. The sharpness is good. And this diagonal line right here, which you've heard me say before, diagonals indicate activity or action or excitement. That's really good. That's really good. Um, again, I've said this before, a shoot loose and crop later. You're a little tight right here and not as tight right here, which doesn't say much as far as someone working their way around down here, but up here, you're a little bit tight. So shoot looser and then crop later. Uh, let's see, I would get rid of this. It's very close to the edge. And when things are close to the edge, they seem to be more attention grabbing than, um, than when they're somewhere in the middle. So think about that, removing that, maybe this, a couple things on the edge. Um, the wow factor is really quite good. Your exposure is really good. You're sharp, no hot spots, no, no blackouts or anything. The legs that are in shadow, still you can see the edge of them, the, the fur on the edge, which helps add a little detail, so that's good. Um, your reflection line is below half, which means it's a picture of a fox with a reflection. You don't have to debate on back and forth, which is more important and so on. And people that view your work, they don't think in their mind, now I wonder what that's a picture of. But the mind sees a perfect balance and can't decide which to go for. So you have just enough that it's not a perfect balance. So that's good. Uh, let's see. I already mentioned what I would remove. Um, your light is very controlled. You used warm color, cool color again. Um, the orange and the green. And you can see, you can tell the green drops away. And the lighter values and the warmer colors come forward. It really does work. Um, maybe one thing I might suggest is maybe a real slight vignette here. If you don't have any more room for, for um, extending your crop, which now there's software that you can extend your crop and it will content aware and fill in the part you added on, it's amazing. But I'd think about a little bit of a vignette, just slight, you kind of have that idea down here. So take it all the way around. In fact, you may have just a teeny tiny vignette there. So if you do already, then tell me that I better look closer. Um, I think that's it for now. Who took the picture? Okay, Rick, uh, can you identify the photographer for us? Yeah, Marlene McNair. Okay. Yes, Marlene is not with us this evening. Let me check my alphabetized list. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Okay. Okay, spouting, number seven. The exposure on the water is really right on the button. No hot spots, no blackouts, really, really nice there. Um, in fact, the overall exposure is good. I like the fact that this kind of falls away to nothing. Normally you would say, oh, that's all blacked out, but so is this. So I do like that in this case it fades away and makes the water the star of it for sure. Now, at first I thought about the symmetry of it. If you want a symmetrical shot, make it symmetrical, but then I saw the water really isn't coming out of dead center here. So there, there wasn't a lot you could do except try all different angles all the way around. So I'll give a pass on that one for sure since the water's not symmetrical even coming out of the middle. Um, as far as post-processing, I suggest that you remove these little green spots here because they really don't help your image. I, I'm, they're probably just out of focus water drops, but this is your story. This is your image. I would try to clone these if I could or remove them, whatever, whatever you do, however you do it. Try it and see if, if it makes a difference or not. If not, let them in. Uh, the sharpness and the exposure, I said, are, are on the button. 
Um, the symmetry I mentioned, the green spots I mentioned, the lighting is really dramatic. You took advantage of the lighting. You really, you did a good job here. There's nothing, you know, it's easy for this to be wet and glary, nothing. So it looks great. The rich red and the silver and the black, great combination there. Uh, good idea. People walk by these things all the time and don't photograph them. Um, so my only suggestion there is try removing the green spots. See if you think that makes the water even more stand out. Okay, who did this one? Mike, that was me, Mary. Um, Pretty cool. <laughs> thanks, Mike. It was taken at Ashcombs. They had these Huge, oh right they had those huge pots there and they were spouting there's three of them spouting water and um, i didn't even notice those green spots you just mentioned so i will try to take them out and you would not believe all the dots i already did remember. <laughs> good there were many of them and it wasn't symmetrical and i almost didn't put it in and i thought it was too tight and i thought you would mention that but um, <laughs> i will i will take your advice and um remove some more spots <laughs> well the other thing you can do is go back again and walk all the way around and photograph the whole way around it okay and see if you can hit a symmetrical spot i will try that it was it was a grab shot actually when i took i took a bunch of them but they were grab shots of mm -hmm. with the kids photo camp week oh yeah so we were doing we were there and that's where i got these shots oh okay yeah, it's a cool idea for sure. Thanks, Mike. Capital Blue Waters, uh, as far as being a night exposure, it's really quite good, clean and sharp. Your focus is good. Um, the exposure is good. I see detail all throughout in here, even here. So that's, that's nice. That's very, very nice. Um, one thing I would suggest, it says, what could they have done better at the time of capture? And this might sound ridiculous, but if you go back, well, there is gonna be a photo walk here before long, that's right. If you wanna get this shot again, put this in line with this. And you can do that simply by moving your point of view. So give that a try and see if, because this has like symmetry written all over it. So give that a shot and, and see if that helps the balance or, or helps it to do more what you want it to. And if, if not, then go with this for sure. Uh, let's see. I noticed up here, that's either, at first I thought it was bugs because of the light, but I think it's water that's spritzing up. So it's part of the shot. It's part of what's there. It's a bit distracting, but if people realize that it's probably water from the fountain, it belongs there. Now, the only thing that I could see to do would be if you, if you do masking or do a selection on this and then back off on the white, the white, the whites or the highlights and see if that makes a difference. If you like it as part of the image, let it there because it's actually part of what happened. So it's just a suggestion. One other thing is I can't, on the screen, I'm not really sure what's going on down here. I would suggest a tighter crop on the bottom, not smack up against here or anything, but you could probably take an inch off here and not lose anything in your image, any impact. So think about giving that a try. Uh, the wow factor, really good. The exposure is good. It's nice and crisp. Um, you used layers very, very well. You have a layer here of a warm color, layer here of a cool color. You have dark. You have a cool color. You have a warm color. Whether you even know it's happening or not, it makes a difference in your image. So, so good work there. Now, as far as distractions go, I would remove this and this because it's halfway in and halfway out. Same over here. Remove this and this, halfway in, halfway out. Things that are on the edge and leaving the image are definitely more bothersome. 
So just, just clone those out or do whatever you do and that'll take care of that. Tighten up your crop down here. If there's nothing there on my screen, it looks like nothing's there, but um, you'll know better than that, better than me on that one. Uh, the details are good. The blue and orange thing, the complementary colors of blue and orange are so prevalent and they look so good and hardly anybody notices. They look, every sunset has that combination and it just looks so nice. So good work there using the warm and cool, the blue and orange, very nice. Um, so my suggestions are crop the bottom, clean up those edges. And if you go back, try a more centered shot and see if you like that better. Okay, who took the shot? That was mine, Mike Terry. Uh, I did take a shot or two with it centered and it's sort of, I don't know. I, I wanted to have the, you could see more of the of the walkway there. That's why I went okay. off to the side a little bit. But it, and if, and those little things that you thought might be bugs, they are water. I thought maybe. Yeah, they're water. Well, then and they the belong. Water is, I'm sorry. Then they belong. And there's water coming out from the side. Uh, the fan, it started to spray out and it caught it just in midair. Cool. Thank you. Thank you okay. for your comments. I will do those. Oh, and the bottom, those yes. are steps. Okay. I can't see them. Oh, yes, I do now. Very, very faint down yes. here. All right. Then forget that. Okay. Forget I said crop it. Leave it there. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Okay, why be waterfalls? Um, the first thing that, that struck me here were these beautiful curves. Even the water seems to have a curve. And of course the rocks and the water. And then this seems to be a curve here. Beautiful, beautiful composition there with the curves, really nice. Uh, nice and crisp on the rocks, which looks really good. Again, the um, the candy cotton water always looks beautiful. Um, one suggestion it says about in post-processing, I would get rid of this because the again, the value of this, meaning the lightness is the same as here. So it, it means a struggle you can need. I wouldn't crop it because you have some nice stuff over here. I would just maybe clone it out, um, wipe it out with a, with a brush or whatever whatever style you use. So um, it says, what could you do better at the time of capture? Pay careful attention to the edges of your frame, not just you, but everybody, because then you could remove this because it's really not helpful and remove that. This is fine. I'll pretend I didn't see that. This is fine. <laughs> This you see coming in, you can decide whether you want that or not. It kind of flows with the lines here. So, you know, it looks fine, but I would remove that and that and see what, um, what it comes up with, see what you think. Uh, let's see, good details, your exposure's good. The rocks are nice and sharp and crisp. The repeated curves. One thing about curves in a composition is that they're peaceful and calming so that looks nice really nice and it goes along with the story you're telling about calm and peace and the beauty of nature uh the distractions i already talked about your lighting is smooth and even like a huge gigantic soft box um warm and cool colors again the greens and the oranges look really good together uh let's see maybe i don't know if you want to do this or not but maybe you want to desaturate your greens just a tiny bit so they don't steal the thunder from this. So try that because they're, they're just a little bit um, strong, at least for my taste. So back them off a little and that'll make this more the star. Okay, who did this one? Is it <laughs> R.L. <laughs> Frazier? <laughs> Okay, Rod, you on board? 
he's he's with us, but uh, let's see. You have to unmute yourself, Rod. Oh, he might be catching trick or treaters. Oh, that's, true. <laughs> that's right. He mentioned they were ringing the doorbell. Okay, right. we'll we'll move on. Okay, Breaker. Let me move this up out of the way. All right. The again, the blue and orange thing is just it's just beautiful. It works so well. And you might see that combination a lot in sports. You'll see it with the Miami Dolphins. You'll see it with the New York Mets or the New York Knicks. Or um, there's a fair amount of teams that use the blue and orange combination. The Bears, Chicago Bears, because it is beautiful. And you can see here, the blue looks bluer because it's against the orange which looks oranger against the blue. So they, they complement each other. Each makes the other pop. So it's a really good use of color there. Your shutter speed is perfect. It is perfect. You can see the water splashing up because it's in lines. Very, very nice. Um, one thing that I would, would do, it's got nothing to do with your image, but there's a lot of space on the top and the bottom. And there's a couple of ways to, to get rid of that. I'm not sure, Lightroom does not use um, layers. So I don't, I don't know how to do it in Lightroom, I don't use it. But in some software, you can lay down what's called a canvas and you would make the canvas a little bigger than the image. Then you place the image on the canvas and now you have a border out around. So this would look tremendous with like a small crop. And this might just be because of the, the um, software that we're using here, I don't know. But if that's your crop, I would tighten it on the top and the bottom because this is absolutely fabulous. And to see this on a metal, uh, metal paper or a actual metal print would be eye popping. Uh, let's see, super wow factor, technically nothing. And if you're gonna be disappointed if I don't mention something to clone, I will probably get rid of this and maybe this, but that's super nitpick for sure. You used layers just perfectly here, here and here, really nice. The lighting is just so warm and so clean. Uh, again, the blue-orange combination. And again, uh, I know I've said it before a hundred times, the warm colors advance, the cool colors recede. The higher values, the lighter values advance, the darker values recede. And you can see that at work right here. If any of you know anything about what's called the zone system, the zone system is actually a set of values from dark black to white white. And that's what values are. And the color, like this has a way higher value than this. So maybe that'll, that'll give you an idea of what I'm, what I'm talking about. So good job there. Um, again, making something extraordinary out of the ordinary. So suggestions. Uh, maybe clean up those little spots at the bottom and maybe try putting it on a canvas or or if your software does borders, try that. Really nice stuff. Really, really nice stuff. Who did this? Thanks, Mike. This is Dennis. <clears throat> yeah, this was a beautiful summer evening at uh, the beach in Delaware. The sun was just setting so that the golden hour was in effect and it was just illuminating those crashing waves beautifully. So I experimented with uh, a long, well, it was a long lens and experimented with different shutter speeds to, to, until I got the look that I wanted. <clears throat> the uh, bands, the dark bands at the top and the bottom are not part of the image. Okay. Yeah, that's the background. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Beautiful work. Thanks. Gull in hot water. Um, as far as uh, what the photographer did well, I like the fact that you gave the bird room to move into. That way it doesn't seem like it's leaving your image, which the viewer will do also. This is leaning 
this is leading into your image because you have room there. So that's a good job composition wise for sure. Uh, let's see, good exposure as far as the whites go. You can see detail all in through here. Now on my screen, this looks a little hot, but I'm also seeing um, small details in there. So I'm gonna presume that they're actually really there. Um, good sharp eye there, real nice. And as I look closely, I, I have a note here that there's the catch light. So good job there. Um, anything in post-processing to remove, I would simply clean this out. It's too close to the wing to not be noticed. So just, just remove that and you're good to go. Uh, let's see. I said the neck was slightly hot, but again, we're looking at it on a screen. Um, there's room for the bird to move into. The horizon is slightly above center. So that's a good job. You're not dividing it in half and making the viewer decide what's the most important. You, um, I mentioned the spot, good control of the light. It looks like it's possibly midday, although this is kind of reddish. So I'm gonna take a wild guess that this is the background actually, that there's something red back there or, a, or fall foliage or something, because this looks like it's kind of like a, harsh later in the evening kind of light but whatever it is you controlled it well and you did really well with it again i'll say it again the light the um warm and the cool advance retreat just perfect use of a complementary color setup there very very nice and that orangey red in the water is really really nice um a good job if i am wrong about the neck and it's a little hot just do um, retrieve details or, or something like that to get that calmed down a little bit. But everything looks great. Good job. Who did this one? Uh, that's mine, Kurt Wilkie. Awesome. That was taken about nine in the morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that proves that I'm never up at nine in the morning. I don't know what the light looks like. <laughs> yeah, I over at um, Cador State Park, Lake Marburg. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, nice job. Really nice. And that red is from the uh, trees on the shoreline, uh, reflecting maybe. the color onto the water. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yep. Good job. Yep. Thank you for your comments. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, this is Cascade at the Clark. Um, the Clark, by the way, is a museum, an art museum in Massachusetts. And this set here if you look at a picture of the entire museum grounds this looks super teensy compared to the the rest of the grounds but here i mean the angle that you chose is just great just great um as far as let's see what could you have done better at the time of capture i have no no remarks about that as far as post processing I would consider a little more contrast, just up the contrast a little bit, or you could even use curves if that's what you do. Try a little contrast and see if that makes a difference. Now, if you want a smooth, creamy look, then stick with this. Your exposure is really good. Your focus is really good. The background is beautiful compared to this. Here you have repeated shapes. Here you have repeated shapes. Here you have them. Here you have them. This is even here. I mean, your composition is great. And also triangulation, which I haven't mentioned much tonight. You can see that there's a triangle formed right here. And there's also one here. See how it gets wider at the bottom and more narrow at the top. Really nice work there with the triangulation. The water. So what you have is four layers, three layers of triangles. You have this layer, this layer, and this layer, which is a great composition. Triangles are a really good compositional tool. Repeated shapes, also called rhythm, is also a very, very good compositional tool. So, so good work there. Focus is good. The exposure is good. 
Um, one other thing that I didn't mention, I like the curves, which offset everything else. They are kind of re repeated up here by the curves of the trees. Beautiful composition, really nice work there. Uh, let's see. The lighting was kind of like photographing under a big giant soft box. Um, again, making the ordinary look extraordinary. My only suggestion is try a touch more contrast, but if you like that dreamy look, then you know, tell whoever's home with you that I don't know what I'm talking about. Try a little contrast, see what you think. Okay, who did this one? Hey Mike, Dave Marchetto. Nice work. Hey, thanks very much. Um, you know, this is at the Clark and most people wouldn't see this because of the uh, reflecting pool you kind of mentioned is to the right. And yeah, it's like a couple hundred <laughs> yards away from where everybody is. Exactly. Nobody would really see this unless you hiked out. But uh, I like your thoughts about the contrast. It's so funny because uh, this is a linear contrast. And I, after I submitted it, I tried the, uh, you know, the more S-curve type. Yeah. Yeah. And I liked it much better, but it was a little too late. And, you know, I wasn't <laughs> quite sure if the contrast was better or worse. So I'm glad you commented on it. And thanks very much. You're welcome. If you can, if you can learn or get used to the curves, the power of contrast in the curves is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good work. Thanks again, Mike. All right, round and round we go. Again, real good use of the shutter speed here. Real good use. Um, Pre-visualizing how this might look is a skill all of its own. Now, mainly as photographers, we try a shot. Oh, that looks terrible. Try another one. Uh, it's a little better. Try another one a little better. But the fact is, you have to pre-visualize what you think it might look like or that there's potential there. So you did a good job in, in picking out something that you could use. And pre-visualizing is a good skill to, to, to work on, to see if you can get something to match what you want it to look like. Now, as far as suggestions go um, in post-processing, this turned out to be a bit of a problem probably for you, but I think you can solve it by just darkening which you do by doing either a burn or you do a selection and then darken everything. I think if you darken it, it'll recede more if that's what you want because it's advancing now because of the warm colors and because of the lighter values. That's why it's stepping toward us and away from these cooler colors and darker values. So if this is something that you weren't quite sure what to do with it, try darkening it. And I mean, darken it all you want and see how that works out for you. Because the rest of it, the swirls and the curves and the, the leading out of the image is really cool. It's really cool. You have a line here, a leading line. It comes down, follows the leaves, hits the waterfall, does a swirl and heads right out of the image. So you did a beautiful job there. And what we don't want is this to stop everything. So, so you have a leading line, you have detail in the dark area, the leaves look good. Let's deal with that log and try darkening it and see what you think. See if you think that that helps. Again, the blue and orange is just tremendous together. And in fact, if you want to desaturate this orange a little bit, maybe try that. Darken this back and see what you can do there. So those are my my two main suggestions are to my real main suggestion is to darken this and then maybe desaturate this a little bit. But I love your line. It even jumps back here and swirls around and swirls and out it goes. Beautiful job there. Nice and sharp and crisp here. I hope you can see now that what I mean by the value of this being different from the value of this, 
That's why this comes forward and that goes back. Okay, who did this one? Uh, this is Joe Farrell. That's mine. And thank you, Mike. I'm going to try that darkening of that log. Does that make uh, sense? Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Check that out. Okay. I have it on my screen. But that was up at Enders Falls in Connecticut. And my brother-in-law, Frank, is with uh, is on the call tonight. And he may remember that we took buckets of leaves and we dumped them <laughs> in the water to be able to get the right amount of leaves on this 25-second exposure at F14 at uh, ISO 31 Oops, to sorry. get that... Um, uh, to get that uh, uh, eddy in there. And uh, so that's that's what we did we to go. get that. And um, I had to do focus stacking on this. And uh, also I did exposure blending. If you look at the water in the middle yeah. there. Yeah. That, uh, if I, at 25 seconds, that was gonna be really blown out. So what I had to do was take a, a shot at high ISO at a faster shutter speed and blend that back in so that wouldn't get blown out. Uh, Cause I'm real anal about having blown out stuff in water. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, but we threw lots of leaves in there. ND filter and a polarizer was used on that particular one. So that's- I can, I can tell you got those leaves at um, Ash Combs cause I see a price <laughs> tag up here. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. They were in the woods and we, we just <laughs> raked them in there. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Fish tails. What did the photographer do well? You created a mood. You created a calm, relaxing, zen mood. And it looks like the lighting was kind of difficult because I can see that it was bright at certain spots because of the, the reflection, maybe on the water, maybe on the fish. And then the light was different back here in the swirls and the tail movement. But it's absolutely beautiful. Now, one thing I don't like is I hate carp. I used to go fishing and if I caught a carp, I would cut it off. I wouldn't even pull it in. So if I took this, I'd remove those barbs because that says they're in the carp family. But actually, I really wouldn't do that because it, it provides an absolute beautiful lead. They point to where the fish is going. And it, it is a member of the carp family, actually. I'm guessing it's a koi, but I'm not a fish expert for sure. As far as the wow factor, it is superior. Your shutter speed is on the money. You've got movement, you've got motion. I've mentioned before that diagonal lines caught are, are a um, reflection of movement. And you can see that here. And even here, you can tell the fish is not stationary. Beautiful swirls back here. And if you're thinking, well, it's not very sharp. No, it isn't, but it is beautiful. It doesn't always have to be super sharp. Just look up impressionism or pointillism. It doesn't have to be sharp. Really, really nice. The lighting's beautiful. Um, a good job on the background. This provides a background. So does this and this. So you're not just floating around in blackness. It's, it's beautiful. Um, let's see. I had nothing but good to say about this. Great shot. Who did this one? It's mine, Mike, uh, Elaine Shook. Uh, thank you for your comments. Um, this is a koi, by the way, and he would be insulted if he heard you call him a carp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> koi are very um, proud of their heritage. Yeah. So, um, and more expensive than carp. <laughs> he, he's a very large one too. He weighs in at about five pounds. Wow. Um, which helps with the with achieving those swirling lines. Um, they're very graceful swimmers. And that's what this image was all about. Mm -hmm. Not about the sharpness, not about the color. It was about exactly. the lines. And when it comes to photographing water, I, I like to do a lot of abstracts because of the distortions and reflections and 
um, and whatnot. I, I would often um, use one of the larger orange koi and have that orange and, and um, blue color coordination. But because this wasn't about the fish, I didn't want the fish to stand out so yeah. much as his shape. Understood. So I thought the more neutral color was better. Um, and the sharpness, lack of sharpness did not, did not bother me because he's underwater and right. very, <laughs> they don't look sharp when they're underwater. Um, but I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Sure. And sharpness would really have destroyed your mood. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. 15. Mirror, mirror is the bay. Um, I like your placement. And the reason I say that is because there's less room here and more room here. Again, it gives room for the bird to move into. Your exposure is really good. Um, I'm seeing the light coming from this side. This looks a little hot on the screen, but it might not. Um, it might not actually be that way. You can see here that the water takes care of all that and still detailed. So the shot is super sharp, and your exposure probably is is right on the button. Would be my guess. The eye of the animal is sharp. This is really cool, and it's caused by this little poke here. And you can see the rings coming out from moving the feet and also causing this really nice, really, really nice. Um, what I might suggest is that you clean up a couple of these little spots here, especially this one since it's so close to the bird. And maybe this one since that's so close to the bird. This one isn't, so it's much less noticeable, but you might as well get rid of it while you're working on it. And um, really really good job on the negative space and here's what i mean by negative space it's the space that's not used i guess you'd say inside of your composition this is negative space this is negative space this is not it's not enclosed it's not a shape it's not a form but this is so real nice job there. And that's a good, um, that's a good compositional tool. It really is. Your focus is, is right on the button. The eyeball is super sharp. Um, the curves are nice. It's nice when these birds move their neck in such a beautiful S curve. Very, very nice. And, and you caught it too, good job. Um, I already mentioned the dark spots. The light's coming from the left, you can tell by the shadows on the right, which gives form, actually not a problem. Uh, the yellow eye is showing. The blue background is calming and relaxing, the cool color, which is one reason it kind of drops away. Although you'll notice it doesn't drop away as much as some of the others because the value of it is about the same. But the coolness still lets you know that it's a background. So good job there. Um, clean up the spots. And if it is a little hot there, see if you can get those um, details back on the tail feather. And if it's only because of what I'm seeing on the screen, then just ignore that comment. OK, who did the image? Oh, uh, Jan Williams. Um, so thanks for your comments. I um, I messed with this just before I submitted it. This what you're calling the hot spot, um, and this this photograph actually is hardly adjusted at all. I don't use Lightroom. I don't I don't use Photoshop. So um, I I I like to be able to capture it and not have to mess with it. Um, so this has very, very little adjustment. And I, I didn't see the spots until I just looked at it again and went, oh, how did I manage to leave those in there? So thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Sorry to be such a. No, it's good. I, it's just, you know, it's just remembering to always look for them. What I. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you print, they're there forever. That's right. That's exactly right. 
Okay, that's it. That's number 15. Very good. Thanks, Mike. We always appreciate your insightful comments. Guys, would you uh, unmute yourselves and uh, let's give Mike a round of applause. Thanks, Mike. Any, anyone Thanks, have any Mike. Uh, questions or comments for Mike? Thanks, Mike, for the review. Oh, really you're enjoy, welcome. You really welcome. enjoy that. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, thanks again, Mike, and uh, thanks for attending, Welcome. everyone. I'll get an email out tomorrow with follow-up information, including a link to the recording. So thank you, and good night. Good night. Thanks again, Mike. Welcome. Bye. Bye.